everyone. Today we're going to talk about the CP1H data control instructions. Um, and just as the name applies, what we actually are doing is you looking at instructions that actually manipulate data based on certain parameters that we input. So up here, the first one that we're going to talk about is the uh, PID instruction. And the PID instruction stands for proportional, integral, and derivative. And it's based on an error. So what happens is you have a, uh, a set point that you bring in. And that set point is followed by an error that's detected. It gets put through a PID and it outputs the result into the process. Then the process again is monitored through your um, uh, sensor and your sensor then provides the feedback again. So that's basically how it is. We won't get into all the um, parameters and everything, but basically what we're doing is we're inputting our present value. That's our source or our first word. We um, input the parameters for our PID, and then what we get is what they call a manipulated variable out, which then we can use to control our process. So here it is up here, and I don't have anything really connected per se um, to our PLC. But uh, I'll turn this on, and what you'll basically see is the output. It will start to um, go up and up until it runs out and just stays. So it's just trying to find out uh, what that output's going to be. All right. So that's PID. Next, we have the same thing, basically, but also with auto-tuning. That means that our basic parameters, our PI and D parameters, are tuned automatically. And how that does it is it actually does two cycles of the um, output to determine what the variables are and then it will set in the controller itself. So that's PID. The next one is limit control. And limit control what it will do is it will actually only provide the output when it's within the lower limit and upper limit of what we set in our parameters. So you see here, we only have this area that it will integrate or display in our output. So the maximum value here and the lower limit there. So on my example here, we'll go down to data memory 500. Here we go. And that would be my lower limit here and then my upper limit here so let's just take a look uh, in my lower limit we're going to put in a value of 1000 and we'll say the upper limit will be 2000 notice this is all in uh, hexadecimal 2000. So now, if I put a value here, anything um, lower than uh, lower than 1000, it should always output 1000. And anything uh, higher than 2000, it'll output 2000 only. So let's turn this on. And we turn that on. We're operating now. So let's uh, put in a value of 100. When we do, again, the only thing it outputs is that 38E8, which is the binary equivalent to 1000. So let's try um, something within the range, we'll say 500. And sure enough, I, uh, I get uh, the output. And we'll try something else higher, like 3000. And at 3000, we get the upper limit. So sorry, let's put something in the middle again. Um, said, uh, say 1500. And we get the exact same thing. So it, it uh, limits your band at all. So it limits the output, what it can actually put. The next one is our dead band control. And dead band control actually will show you the difference between your upper limit and where the value is or your lower limit and value and when it's within those limits it's actually read zero 
So that's why they call it the dead band. It's a zero point within there that it's actually controlling. So it just um, will control that zero. So let's turn this on. And with this instruction, uh, we're using uh, D710, this is right here. And we're using the same parameters as we before, 1000 and 2000. So let's take a look at um, here. If we put in the value of of 1,000, okay, we get zero. If we put in the value of 2,000, we get zero. If we put in the value of, uh, let's say, 2,001. You'll notice that we get one now on our output it says zero because it's one over that limit if we put in the value of 9999 you'll see that we get fffff which is represented of the negative of that so that's dead band control then we have dead band zone and the zone works uh, similarly but what happens is we get a a negative we have a negative bias and a positive bias so what happens is any number that we put in it will actually input that number so anything lower than a zero then we get a negative bias and then anything pot in a positive we get a plus bias so our output itself will either be up here or down there so it kind of just skips that area so if we look at the zone we'll turn that on and what you'll see is our in our zone we're going to have a, a negative bias right now or of uh, 100 and a positive bias of 100 which is what the uh, 64 hex is so let's put in uh, the value and we'll try the value um, well we'll try 10 so it's a positive number. So what we end up with, as soon as we put 10 in, we get the uh, equivalent of 10 plus our um, 100. So let's put one value of one in. So in that case there, we should get 65, which is one over 64 there, which is the binary equivalent to 101. If we put a negative number, so let's say minus one, This is not a, an unsigned. Okay, so we'll put in, uh, let's see. Uh, we'll try uh, 400. And you can see when 400 goes in, it's above that, so it adds it to our output. So that is dead zone control. Okay. The next one we're going to look at is time proportional output. And here is my uh, time proportional output and what it will actually do is it typically is used with PID and it will take that manipulated value that we got when we first did it and convert it and put a time frame to it so it controls that output bit. Now in our case here what we're going to do is we're going to oscillate an output on our PLC and we'll have manipulated uh, variable range we have an input this is all the parameters that we have to set prior to actually working with this instruction and this is all documented within the manual or if you visit our website at accautomation.ca okay. so typically here's our typical example PID you take your manipulated var variable you put it in as the input to this uh, time proportional output and it will actually pulse the bit on the on a ratio so let's look at our example here and we'll turn this on and what we have is our output look at 9 10 right. it actually is setting up our parameters and then our next one is actually our, our uh, duty cycle 
which we have set for um, five seconds. And our input here is actually equivalent to a do, um, how much of that duty cycle is a percentage. So right now I'm going 50%. So let's change that down to um, 10%. This goes from um, zero, zero, or one, zero, zero to 99.99. So if we go one, zero, zero, so down to 1%, we should just see that flash really quickly in our control period of five seconds. Probably too quickly for us. So let's change that back up to, uh, we'll go 75%. So now what we're gonna do is hold it on for a lot longer, 75%, and then turn it off for quicker. So you can see that change of our output. So that's time proportional. do is just turn that off and our next instruction is scaling now scaling basically what it will do is it will um, convert um, based on a linear input that we've done so let's look at the first one here we have three different uh, scaling parameters here so scaling SCL and we'll turn this on And we'll look at uh, our parameters, which start at data memory 1010, right here. So we're going zero, and it represents 64, which is 100. Then we're going to invent 1,000, and it goes to C8, um, which is actually, I, I believe, 200. So we're going 100, 200. So if I put our input source word in and we'll try uh, 50 we have 0 if we try uh, 1000 we get 900 yep so it takes that linear scale that we've inputted and it is finding points on the scale as our result so that's basically all we'll do. We do have two more of the scaling features and one is using sign binary to uh, BCD scaling. And in this case here, what we do is we put in offsets. So an offset base, or we put in uh, the delta Y and delta X. So in this case here, we put in a, a delta X of a signed BCD. We put a delta Y as a signed binary and we can put an offset if we wish and that will actually draw that linear scale so when we put those inputs in we get an output that we expect so let's uh, the thing to look at is basically you take your delta x which will be your amount that you want over here in the line and what that represents up here you put in your delta y that way you it can draw that linear scale the offset itself is then takes this line and raises or lowers it based on what that offset you input is. Okay. So that is scaling two. Scaling three, um, which is right here, what it will do is again, um, very similar to the other one, but now it takes the BCD to assigned binary. So it's just the opposite, um, we're going instead of, uh, binary to BCD it's the opposite way so again we're dealing with uh, Delta X and Delta Y as our parameters and it draws that linear scale for us we can also put in this instruction a min and max uh, variable so that the output doesn't raise above certain aspects so we can put like limits on that graph without doing it within pairs now the last uh, instruction we have is an average instruction and what the average instruction will do is it takes the source word, it takes the number of cycles that we want, and it will actually then, um, every scan, or every time that instruction is on, it, and it, it executes, it will put the value in, 
and then add up all these values and then give you a resultant word here. Now that's ideal for things like our PID when we were looking at that and um, using that output or that input variable to eliminate some things like noise and things like that that we can always get with our analog signals. So if we turn this on, what you'll get is we'll change this to a value of, we'll say, 1000. It doesn't really look like it's doing much, but you'll see there's a slight delay every time I change a number here. Let's try that again, put 100. What you'll see is those numbers, they, they slowly or quickly change on our output result here as we, 1500. And so what it's doing is if we look at 1310, it is actually um, putting in the variable that we're looking at, that source word, into these um, registers that we specify, and we specified 40 cycles. So it's doing 40 times the scanning and putting these variables in as we change that number. So that way, and it's doing it so quick that you can't really see that, but it will um, um, level out and any disturbances in there will get filtered out a little more when we're looking at analog or any of those variables. All right. If you like this video and like to see more, there's three ways you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, you'll get notifi notification every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is tell a friend or colleague. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.